Welcome everyone. Uh, in today's class, we are going to di discuss digital system design using Verilog. In last three classes, we discovered the basic syntax of Verilog. Today, we will take a practical example and I will uh, explain how you should approach to have a implementation in Verilog for a given behavior. To start with, I will just uh, talk about how to model sequential element and then I will take the example. So, I have mentioned that to store element we need reg, right, the register which store the element. But uh, once we make a flip flop which, uh, mm, which actually inherently use a register, uh, but it has some other control, right. So, you have to control this with clock and as well as there may be some reset signal, right. So, the flip flop is kind of, uh, it is basically reg, but which also have a clock and then you have a reset, you have the D input and the Q output, right. So, this is your uh, flip flop and usually it is edge trigger, right. I want to develop this module, right, the sequential D flip flop. Uh, so, what I declare, I declare a module D flip flop, give the name as I mentioned it has D clock and recess is the input and uh, Q is the output and internal it is having a register ok Q. So, what I want to make it edge trigger right. So, whenever the positive edge of uh, positive edge of the clock comes I want to update the content only not all the time right. So, this is the positive edge this is the positive edge. So, I am going to update the register content only in this time. So, that is why I put passage of clock and what is reset? So, reset is basically say suppose your register content certain value and I want to just flush it off, I want to make it 0 right to restart the computation probably. So, we also have uh, this uh, reset, what I am doing here is I take the negative edge of the reset right. So, suppose this is your clock and say reset may not be sync with the, the clock, so it can be anything right. So, it depends on your reset behavior, it depends on when you want to give the reset. So, what I am telling here is that whenever the positive edge of the clock comes or the negative of the reset right. So, I am going to do this updation in this time right whenever the negative edge comes. And what I have uh, done here it is basically if not reset. So, this is basically active low reset right active low reset means whenever reset equal to equal to 0 then you are going to update right uh, then you only the update the update the reg with 0 that will reset the content and active high means whenever it is reset equal to 1. You can use both, but the design that I have taken I have taken the negative active low reset ok. So, what I am saying here is that if it is 0 right, but it is this is going to happen whenever you get this trigger right the negative reset then I will make the content 0 right. So, if you think about say this is my say Q. So, initially say it was having 1 from this point it will become 0 because uh, this is a negative edge and this is an uh, active low reset. So, it will become 0 here. So, this positive edge come and at this point if your d is 1 it depends on your d right. So, suppose your d is 1 here. So, so it becomes 0 here, but since 1 uh, d is 1 here this is your d at this point there is the positive edge of clock come this is your reset this is your Q, this is your D. So, again this will become 1 right and again at this point it will become 0 because I maintain say D equal to always 1 ok. So, at this point it will become 0 again whenever this clock come again it will become 1 and so on right. This is what is called timing diagram and otherwise I will store the value of input value D to this Q right. This is my D. So, I just the example that I have taken here I maintain D equal to 1 always and the value of Q depends on the reset as well as the clock ok. So, this is one way of modeling D flip flop and this is asynchronous ok. Why this is asynchronous? Your reset is not dependent on the clock right or it can ca come anytime and your updation of the design can happen irrespective of the value of the clock ok. So, this is asynchronous reset right. I am resetting the register in asynchronous manner with, with respect to the clock ok. 
So, in the similar way you can do a synchronous reset you carefully notice here what I have done here I have not put this reset in the trigger list right I do not put this uh, reset in the trigger list I just mentioned that it is only going to happen in positive edge of the clock ok. So, let me take the similar example that I have taken for the last behavior. So, this is my clock right. So, this is my clock and uh, let me take the similar value of reset that say it is something like this ok. So, this is your clock this is reset and let us say I put d value always 1 right and I want to see what is the value of q ok. Now, I want to put check the value of q. So, the difference so in the asynchronous manner whenever this negative edge come I am going to modify the value right, but here I my always only depend on the positive edge of the clock. So, that means whenever the positive edge of the clock come then only this activity will happen not any other time. Whereas, here whenever the positive edge of the clock comes or the negative of the reset comes as in asynchronously this activity can happen right. So, in the synchronous activity can only happen in the this time, but whereas you see here the value can change in between also right. So, all the positive edge coming here, here and here my value of q gets change in between because of the asynchronous reset. This is not going to happen in synchronous mode because here although this value become 0 here and uh, if 0 this is active low reset I want to do this, but I am not going to do it here right. So, if I just do this because this is 1 here if I try to put the value of q now So, since uh, d equal to 1 this will become 1 at this point your d equal to 1 positive edge come reset is 1. So, it will not change so it will remain 1 although this reset becomes 0 here, but it will not modify this value until the next clock come. So, the value will change only from this point and at this point since reset is 0 this value will become 1 ok and this value will remain because and then uh, when the next positive edge come at this point your d equal to 1 and reset is high again it will become 1 right. So, the value will only change at the positive edge not any other places right. So, this is the difference between a synchronous uh, reset versus asynchronous reset. It depends on your uh, application you can choose both uh, it, you will learn more about this uh, one when you are becoming expert in digital design, but both both use both are useful ok. So, now let me go move on to the example let us say I want to develop a digital design that for this behavior right. What is the behavior? I have a for loop which run from uh, I 0 to 10. So, that means 11 uh, iterations and every iteration I am doing x equal to x plus y ok. So, this is going to happen 11 times and basically your x will become initially it was 0. So, it is basically in first iteration x will become y then it will be 2 y then 3 y 4 y to 11 y final x value will be 11 y right. And then I will just check whether uh, x less than 0 then I will make y equal to 0 otherwise it make x equal to 0. So, this is a very simple example just to demonstrate this is may not be very useful or meaningful example ok. So, now uh, once I give you this behavior and I ask you to develop a digital design corresponding to this behavior. The first thing you have to understand that uh, here there are 11 addition operation is happening here right. So, all these 11 operations cannot be done in one clock right this is the first decision you have to understand. So, what you would like to do now I, I cannot do this entire design in one clock. So, I have to think about how many clock I need to complete this behavior ok. So, let us say uh, you decided that in first clock you are going to clear this x equal to 0 y equal to because you have to clear those values right you have to reset those values. So, suppose you assume that um, you uh, you will keep a register corresponding to x uh, and y and i. So, there will be three registers suppose in your design. So, you want to clear this x and y that means you want to reset them at the first clock then this loop will execute right 11 time 
and in this loop what will you do you will basically will add x plus y you also have to do i equal to i plus 1. So, these two addition operations are going to happen and then you are going to update both x and uh, i both the register and this is going to happen in a loop right it depends on the number of iterations in this case it is 10 it can be 10, uh, 100 also or 10,000 also. So, this will happen for n times based on the number of loops and then after that you will just compare x equal to x greater than 0 or not and then you will just reset either y or x based on this value. You also have one operation less than equal to right. So, you identify this. So, this is something the way you want to execute your behavior. First clock you reset x y then n iteration you will going to this do this additions the loop behavior and then last iteration you are going to uh, do this uh, either clearing x and y. And what are the uh, operations you have to do? You have to do a uh, less than operation, you have to do a less than equal to operation, two addition operation right. So, these are the operations you need. So, this you need function you need corresponding to this. How many variable you have? x, y and i. So, you need 3 reg corresponding to this and kind of 1 plus n plus 1 right. So, this is the rough kind of idea that this many clock cycle right. So, this is the kind of uh, your decision. So, what you have finally, you will have a controller FSM okay, and the data path. In the data path, you will have this FU, then this reg and then their interconnections. On the other hand, the controller FSM will give the signal whether you want to reset these registers right there will be some uh, signal to reset right reset and load. So, there will be for each reg there will be two kind of signal one is reset and one is load reset or clear. Load means it is basically if there is a register and there is a input value you may not want to update this register in every clock. Right. So, the register will remain. So, suppose if you have uh, your design is running for uh, 100 clocks and this register uh, some value will be there always in the input, but you do not you may not want to update that particular value in all the clock. Right. So, maybe only in 5 clock. So, you should have a enable signal in addition to the signal that I have talked about. Right. So, you will have a clock, you will have the reset and the enable signal or load right the load or enable uh, reset or clear and you have a input d right and the output q. So, uh, ba so basically for each register you have to also decide whether you want to update this register in a particular clock or not. So, based on for each register there will be two signals. So, there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 signals corresponding to 3 registers it will be there. From the data path what will come here you will have whether this uh, less than is happening or less than equal to is happening right. So, these two signal will come here right. So, this uh, less than and less than equal to because based on that it will decide right. So, if in this loop if it is not less than 10 less than equal to 10 it will do these operations. Once uh, it complete this 11 iterations then it will move to this part of the code right. So, the controller should know uh, whether your i less than equal to 10 or not whether your x less than 0 or not right. So, these two information will come from the data path to the controller. And then controller you have kind of a FSM right. So, you will have a loop like this and then you do this. So, this can be a loop and in this signal you have to see what are the value of these signals to the data path and from the data path this value will come back to the FSM and based on that the trust state transition is going to happen right. So, this is the overall design policy that you have to follow ok. So, uh, here is the uh, kind of a abstract view of the design that will happen. So, this is your data path right, this is the data path I am talking about and this is the controller FSM right. So, this is the controller FSM that I was talking about and you see here in the data path you have a register Y, you have a register I and register X 3 registers. You need two adder this is for the loop this is basically doing X plus Y and this is I plus 1 right. So, this is the R 1 is coming binary 1 and the value of i is going back. So, this is doing i plus 1 here this is y and this is the value of x is going back. 
so it is doing x plus y and that value is going to store in x okay and then this x value is also coming to check compare compare whether it is greater less than x uh, whether it is x less than 0 or not and that value is going back to to the fsm right this is the x less than 0 there is one more comparator where i am going to check whether this is equal to 10 or not so you are giving the value 10 your i is coming here and this value is effectively going to this right this is the i less than equal to 10 along with that it has clock and reset and for each register it generate this load and clear so this is active uh, low uh, design i am taking so basically for zero it is going to update and for one it won't right this is how we uh, declared here so for say for in y you have a load this is the enable signal whether you want to update y or not in my design i am not going to update uh, y uh, only for that case where uh, y equal to zero right in the loop i am not going to do so most of the time my y value y load value will be 1 right and y clear is the reset in the loop i am not going to update y so this value will be most of the time will 1 only for the time where this x less than 0 that time this will be 0 i will talk about that more similarly i have signal for x and i okay so this is the overall picture of the uh, your overall design that will capture this behavior right and it is kind of multiple clock cycles right so once you think about so you have to draw this uh, plan this architecture first so this will be my overall architecture that is going to achieve this behavior okay once you have decided this uh, your life is simple right you have to define all those things in very love and i'm going to do that okay so in the data path as i mentioned you have register for x y and y i and y you have adder two adder and then there is a comparator basically which is dual to less than and less than equal to right so adder i just declare a module adder here i just it is assuming this is the adder module so it will have a and b and the output is sum okay so this is a data flow level modeling right where i just say key sum equal to a plus b so if you want to do a get level modeling instead of do this the get level this very log code that i have given you you can use that directly here okay here i am not assuming there is carry in so it's kind of a there is no carry in for this uh, design okay so uh, this is the data flow level modeling usually people do this because then synthesis tool automatically convert them into get level adder okay so this is my adder module and i have to instantiate this module two times because this is the definition of the adder and in my design i have two adders right this is the adder one this is the adder two so i have to instantiate this particular adder two times once i define the data path okay then i have the register uh, this i already explained earlier uh, the deep flip flop so the similar stuff so it has the in and it has this signal load clear and the clock right these are the control signal clear mean reset and load means enable okay and this is basically active low in the sense that whenever clear is zero i am going to reset the signal whenever load is 0 i am going to update the value otherwise i am not so if you put load equal to 1 it won't update it will call, it will hold the old value of the register right and uh, if you put load equal to 0 then it will update update with the input right so it has uh, three signals uh, this load then reset and clock okay and this is your out so this is how you declare a module register and in your design there are three such registers so i have to instantiate this uh, module three times x y and i okay one more thing uh, this i have also discussed this parameter so i make this module parameterize right so here in when i declare input i just reuse with minus 1 to 0 and i have defined with is 8 okay so that means this a and b is 8 bit because 0 to 7 right 8 bits so that means the data path i am developing here is 8 bit data path to uh, and the register also 8 bit right because i am defining this input and output is 8 bit so overall data is basically 8 bit data okay now you think about that i want to make this design for 32 bit you have to just change this value to 32 that's all right you don't have to modify the entire code but just you have to change in one line that's the beauty of having a parameterized implementation where you can control the data path with just by changing one value uh, where you define the parameter okay so so far i have defined the registers and the adder 
Now I am going to define the comparator which is pretty simple. So, comparator is uh, what are the input you have A and B and if it is less than you have to just check the output will be 1 bit. Okay. So, you uh, whether it is le A less than B or not. Right. So, what I have done I have just defined module comparator LT I give the name less than. So, LT and it has two input A and B which is 8 bit. So, A this 8 bits but output is single bit right this is 1 bit because you it is a binary decision whether it is a less than yes or no. Okay. And it is just doing assign out equal to less than B okay. and again this is parameterized design where I make for 8 bit I can make it for any width. Okay. So, this is how I define the less than similarly I define the less than equal to. So, here again it is basically the module which take A and B of 8 bit data and it is giving the output which is 1 bit and you just check whether A less than equal to B or not right yes or no. Okay. So, this way I declare the module LEQ less than equal to. So, that means I am now done with defi defining all the component of the data path. Okay. What I have to do now? I have to instantiate them because this is the definition they are not uh, be, uh, still having a copy in the hardware. Okay. So, uh, I have defined all the component of the data path now I have to instantiate them in the data path. Okay. So, let me do that. So, this is my that overall design let us say give it the name silly computation the overall design that I am discussing here. So, this is my overall design. So, here I declare the register. So, I have declared the register which is i x and y okay. and this is basically the register I have defined. Okay. So, this is the register that I have defined here this register. Okay. So, I am instantiated this module three times uh, and their name is i x and y and I am putting the proper argument. right? So, that means, uh, this for i input is i out is uh, add i out and i clear and i load that is coming from that uh, controller FSM will be the input to this and the clock C k. And for y, y is the input y in uh, uh, y in is the input y clear and y load the uh, signal coming from the FSM and so on. Right. So, I have instantiated these three modules. Then I have to declare this adder. So, I have already defined a module adder. So, where I just now do add i and i add x. So, this is do x plus y and this is i equal to i plus 1. So, here the output is add i out and the input is a is basically 1 and b is i. So, it is basically it will do i, I plus 1. Here the output is add x out and I just uh, put y and x right this will do x plus y. So, it is now I have two copy of this adder in the hardware, three copy of the register in the hardware and also I have to instantiate the less than module and the less than equal to module. So, for less than what I am giving, so I have to just check x less than 0 right. So, I am going to give x and 0 right as the input to this module because I have defined in terms of a and b and this is the output right x lt 0. So, that is the output corresponding to this module and then you have this compare less than equal to which is uh, going to give i and 10. So, this is decimal 10 this is binary 0 and it will just give you whether i less than equal to 10 or not. So, this way I define my data path. So, now I will move back to the controller part. So, uh, in the controller as I mentioned I have this behavior. So, initially in the first clock I am going to clear x and i so that is why I give this two signal. So, at this in state a I am going to clear them and this is my loop okay. in the loop what I am doing in this state I am updating x load and i load equal to 1 that means I am going to up update them. Okay. So, I will update x and y and then I will just move here here I am going to check whether i less than equal to 10 or not if not I will go back and here because this adder are the combinational circuit it will automatically get updated right there is no control signal for the adder. So, whenever the value of the input modify the adder will do x plus y right. So, whenever this uh, I am giving x load and i load so basically that x plus y and i plus 1 value will update x and y because I am updating this right. So, this is my loop after that I will also check whether x less than so this is if I come come out here means now 
i less than equal to is false. So, not of i less than equal to 10 is true and x if it is less than 0 I will make y equal to 0. So, I put y clear signal on otherwise if I am coming out of the loop and my x less than is false I will clear the x right and then finally this is the final state. So, this is my controller FSM. Now, I have to define this particular FSM also in very log ok. So, to do that what I have to do I have to have a the concept is the current state and the next state ok. So, how many states are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so, there are 5 states. So, I need at least 3 bits ok. So, I need current state 2 to 0 and the next state right. So, this is how uh, I am going to declare this in the in the very log. So, uh, it is basically it depends on the current state and the input right the input from the data path that less than and less than equal to value. I will decide what will be my next state and what will be the value of my all this signal that is going from the FSM to the to the data path and the signals are the load and clear signal for x, y and uh, i ok. So, these are the value in each each of the state value. Uh, I have to see what are what what is the load and clear value I should give it to the data path to execute my intended behavior based on the current state. For example, if you are in this state I am going to give this x clear and i clear 0 other value I will give 1 ok. In this state I will give x load and i load equal to 0 and rest of the value 1 there are 6 such values right and so on. If you do come here I have to give x clear equal to 0 other are 1 and so on. So, this way based on the current state I have to give the value of this control signal so that the intended behavior is going to execute in the data path. And then I will also decide if I am in this current state what will be my next state right. So, the in based on the current state based on this uh, uh, based on the information from the data path whether the less than or less than equal to I will decide what is the value I have to give to the data path as well as uh, what will be my next state ok. So, uh, this is how I am going to define this FSM and this is exactly what I have done here. So, this is my module FSM and it has signals is basically this less than and less than equal to and the clock and reset because so internally you have this next state and the current state register that can also has to be reset if needed and the output is basically that y load y clear x load x clear i load and i clear right this six signals ok these are the inputs this is the output. So, I have just defined this and internally only as I mentioned I have two register one is current state one is the next state and there are three bits ok and I mentioned that the state uh, how it will update or alloys or the red positive clock whenever the positive of the clock comes or negative of the reset come because this is uh, active res uh, low reset. If it is reset then this is basically asynchronous design right my C state will be 0 I will make my current state 0 I will restart the computation otherwise my current state will be the next state ok. So, whatever the next state value that will move on. So, that means you can think of that I am in this state and I know this is my next state. So, in this state I do all the operation that I want to do and then whatever the next state value I decide that will become my current state now right this will become my current state and I will do this operation and based on that I will go to the next state right this is how I am going to control this uh, execution. Now, I have to define this uh, FSM structure the finite state transitions right. So, here in the always whenever the C state value current state value change or you have less than or less than equal to value come uh, under whenever this value modify. Uh, I am going to do this operation and this is a case statement just like your C code switch case statement. If the C state value as I mentioned it is it can value have 0, 1, 2, 7 basically, but uh, important uh, states are basically uh, this. So, I am going to use this state A, B, C, D, E and F right others are not useful in my case. So, if it is 0, 0 that means the state A uh, if the current state is 0, 0 the first state what I am going to do I am going to clear the i and x register right. So, so I just make x x clear 0 and i clear 0 and rest of the value is 1 that means I am not going to touch them. So, this if you put x clear 0 means it will put 0 to the uh, register x and the next state will be 1 right. So, an end state value become 1 ok and this is done. So, if I in my current state is 0 0 that means if I am this state based on this behavior because I am setting this value 
in the data path x and y register will be reset and then I will move to the state B which is my next state. Okay? So, this is uh, the first state behavior exactly the way I want. And then once this is happened, because now uh, your next state value is 1, your current state will be updated when the next positive edge come, your current state will become 1. right? Now since current state modify, I will again this behavior will be executed and here what will happen, now my current state will be 1. And in the current state 1, what I want to do? Uh, I want to update x and y because by the time in the combinational circuit, uh, the value of x plus uh, y and i plus 1 is getting calculated. Okay? So, what I am doing, I am to do, I want to load i and load x, rest of the value is 1, right. So, I just update, uh, load means enable, right. So, I want to update i and x and I do not want to update re rest of the things, okay. So, that is why they are all 1 because it is active low. And my next step will be 2, right. So, I will move on to the state this, this is my state 2 which is c. Again, since my next state updated, my current state will become 2 now and because my current state is 2, I will now go to this state and in this state effectively what I am going to check, I am going to just check, uh, this is the important state here. So, if you have this less than equal to, I will move back to this state. If it is not less than equal to and x less than 0, uh, I am going to move to this d state, otherwise I will go to the e state. So, this behavior you have to capture and remember uh, this less than equal to adder, these are all combinational behavior, they are anyway going to execute in the hardware right all the time. So, now this is the behavior. So, here I am not going to update any register. So, all 1 right I do not want to clear or update any register all 1 because in this state I am just taking a decision whether I will move back here or I will move to the end of computation. If it is less than equal to I will move back to the state 1 right state 1 is this. If it is not less than equal to and, and x less than 0 then I will go to the state 3. If it is not less than and it x less than is false, then I will go to state 4. So, based on my value of this Le Q and Le, I will uh, it will decide whether I will go to the state 1, 2 or 3. right? So, because you can go to any of the state 3 from this state. Okay? So, this is the decision is being taken without any updation of the register. So, this is what I want to emphasize that it is not that you have to update all the register all the time. Based on your computation, you will decide. So, now you will decide the next state and based on the next state it will the current state will become the next state here. right? So, initially this it will actually loop here between this state 2 and 1, state 2 and 1 basically uh, C to B, C to B and all and after 11 iterations it will move to either to state D or E. Okay? And similarly I define the state D and E in D what I want to do I want to just clear Y. So, I just put y equal to 0, rest is 1 and next state will be n state 5. In this state, uh, e state I want to clear x, so I just put x equal to 1, rest of the values are 1 and my next state is the final state and by default, I will not do anything. right? So, I will just move to the reset state and restart the behavior. Okay? So, this is how I declare my FSM okay? and what I have to do now in my uh, that silly computation module. I have already in, uh, instantiated the data path, now I have to instantiate that FSM. So, I just give the name controller and these are my um, signals, output signal and this is the input signal. Right? So, this is the uh, input signal, this is input signal, this is input signal, input signal, this is the output signal. So, based on the definition you just give the proper name. Right? So, then what I have done, I make this data path instantiation. I have instantiated the interconnect uh, FSM and I have also made the interconnection, all this interconnection is done based on the signal name. And if you just run this behavior, it will execute the behavior that you want, right? you want to execute this behavior. So, this behavior we are going to execute in the data path. Okay? Just to uh, show you the timing diagram, so suppose your value of this is the clock. right? And initially your uh, first clock in the state A, your uh, you want to clear, so active low, right? So, your u gives this 0 and uh, this x load i load is 1, right? So, you want to just clear this value of i and x. So, in the next clock this both will become 0. Here it can be anything, I do not know, right? Then from next clock you want to update x and i because in the state B you want to do x plus y and i plus y. And y is already containing the value of y, I am not going to update y anytime. 
okay. So, then in this state uh, I do not want to update the reset. So, I just make active low reset. So, is bigger 1. So, here I am giving 0 I am going to update and so what will happen? Here I will become 1 and x will become y right and next clock you do not want to update. So, you give 1 because this is where you take a decision whether you want to move to the state 1, 2 or 3. In state 3 it will not update. So, it will remain y 1, 1 right. Then again you are going to give a load here in here you will see it is 2 and 2 y right and this way this b and c state will repeat for 11 iteration and finally, the it will move to the state for 2 or 3 and then finally, 5 ok. This is how the whole behavior will happen and it will take kind of uh, for the loop it is 2 n because there are 2, uh, two state are there one state initially and then one state uh, to check whether to clearing x and y and the final state right. This is the overall behavior. So, this many clock is needed to execute this behavior in hardware ok. So, I hope uh, you understand the concept of uh, having a system design uh, from algorithmic behavior in Verilog with this example. Thank you for, for very much for your attention. Thank you.